it gives me great pleasure to also introduce to you our presenter for this month, Donna Orozco. She is currently our secretary on our board, but she is also a spokesperson and a representative for the Brandon Mitchell Gallery. That's a wonderful nugget that we have here in our community. They put on many presentations during First Fridays, and she will be telling you more about what the gallery has in store for the coming months and also what they have been involved in. So thank you, Donna, for the presentation. Hi, I'm Donna Orozco from the Brandon Mitchell Gallery, and welcome to the June membership meeting of the Arts Consortium. And I'm really excited about doing this and happy to be able to do this because I've learned so much about how the Brandon Mitchell Gallery got started. The gallery was established in 2006 to celebrate the artistry of Marjorie Brandon and Judy Mitchell, who were both long-term members, long-time members of the Center for Spiritual Living by Seiya, which houses the gallery. As the plaque in the entrance says, it was named for these two beautiful expressions of light and art. The Center for Spiritual Living is a non-denominational New Thought Church based on spiritual positive thinking, and it's always been interested in the arts. One book group at the Center was made up of a number of people who started taking art lessons later in life. One member was Judy Mitchell, a painter and sculptor. When she died unexpectedly, the book club wanted to do something to honor her, so they decided to create an art gallery in the Center, naming it after Judy, and well-known collage artist, Marjorie Brandon. At first, the gallery featured art by the two namesakes, ceramics and paintings by Judy, and the collages by Marjorie. But eventually, it began hosting art shows every other month. Many people comment that the space is a beautiful and inviting place for a gallery. The Brandon Mitchell was, has hosted shows by such well-known local artists as Richard Arenas, who showed striking sculptures of field workers, Betty Burke's colorful landscapes, and detailed drawings by Janet Botkin, as well as members of the Arts Consortium, such as photographer P.K. Woods, dot artist Shirley Keller, aerosol artist Eric Gonzalez, and Mandela's by Elsa Court. But many of the artists haven't shown maybe ever before, which is what's really fun for us. Peg Hudson, who also sang at her show, art students from the Senior Center, a large group of former artists from Jostens. They had a great reunion on opening night. The Tuesday morning Hanford plein air artist, photography and art quilt groups, student groups, and several shows by talented family members, including the current show by Eva Nicholson, her sister and grandson. These artists are so excited to be able to show their work and the art is beautiful and often unique. Besides traditional paintings, drawings, and photography, and some of the unusual pieces just mentioned, very creative artists have displayed such things as a six foot 3D dragons and floating angels that floated up above the, on the ceiling, origami, designs using dried flowers, and multimedia. Recently, mural artists Colleen Mitchell Vena and Kelsey Gillis hung a huge mural of Bigfoot. Every November and December, the gallery hosts a member and friend show where any artist can enter up to three pieces. It's always a delight to see what kind of amazing art is brought in. Before COVID, the Brandon Mitchell was always part of the downtown First Friday Art Walk, and those evenings often included short talks by the artists, music, readings, and book signings by such local authors as Irene Morse, Carol Firstman, Shirley Keller, and several other writers. Once the artist was also a belly dancer and displayed her dancing talents as well. The gallery is set up with chairs and tables and serves wine and snacks so people can really enjoy socializing while they look at the art and listen to the artist and the music. The gallery is always looking for new artists to showcase. So if you're interested, just email me, Donna Orozco, or leave a message at the Center for Spiritual Living and this fall, we're also planning to bring back the Marjorie Branson Award to honor a local person for their artistic achievement. During the COVID pandemic, we started doing virtual shows, which are posted on our website. And we'll continue to do that, even though we're bringing back live shows, because you really get to know the artists and their work when you're filming and they're talking about their pieces. 
But what's exciting is the First Friday Art Walks are coming back live again in July. So we're excited to welcome back guests in person. In July at the Brandon Mitchell, you'll see another family show, this time a father and son who work in steel, graphite drawings, wood burning, charcoal, cigar labeled collages, geometric cut wood, and body ink. Besides showing the tattoo inks as art, the artist is hoping he's going to be able to bring in a person as he's done these beautiful tattoos on people and they're going to come in and model their work. So we hope to see you at the opening at the upcoming First Friday Art Walks. The gallery is always open after Sunday services, and you can call to set up a group tour. Thanks so much for your interest in the Arts Consortium and the Brandon, Brandon Mitchell Gallery. The Brandon Mitchell Gallery is a fun place, and it's really a privilege to have a chance to hang all this wonderful art and meet so many talented artists.